It doesn't happen every so often, but most summers, several folks, typically healthy and young, undergo sudden, tragic deaths from a brain-eating amoeba. What is this creepy bug? How does it get to the brain? Where is it and how can we avoid it? In this video we will answer these questions along with some other queries. Amoebas are unicellular organisms. The so-called brain-eating amoeba, formerly named as Megleria fowleri, is a species discovered in 1965. It was first identified in Australia, and believed to have evolved in the US. There are numerous species of Megleria, but only the fowlery species causes human disease. There are a number of fowlery subtypes, and all of them are believed equally dangerous. Megleria fowlery is free-living microscopic organism, 8 micrometers to 15 micrometers in size, dependent on its life stage and environment. If we compare its size, with that of a hair, a hair is 40 to 50 micrometers wide. Megleria reproduces by cell division. When conditions aren't favorable, the amoebas become inactive cysts, and when conditions are right, the cysts turn into trophozoites, the feeding form of the amoeba. Thankfully, the amoeba doesn't float in the air, like pollen or the COVID-19 coronavirus. Megleria survives in very warm water, as hot as 113 degrees Fahrenheit, and in warm places around the globe, including warm lakes, ponds, and rock pits, mud puddles, warm, slow-flowing rivers, especially those with low water levels, untreated swimming pools and spas, untreated well water or untreated municipal water, hot springs and other geothermal water sources, thermally polluted water, such as runoff from power plants, aquariums and soil, including indoor dust. Megleria can survive in salt water, properly treated swimming pools, or in properly treated municipal water. The name brain-eating amoeba, makes this amoeba sound like a little zombie, stalking the skull. But brains are unintentional foodstuff for them. Megleria generally eats bacteria, but when it gets into humans, it utilizes the brain, as a source of food. The nose is the passageway of the amoeba, so most often infection occurs from diving, water skiing, or playing water sports in which water is forced into the nose. Infections have also occurred in people, who submerged their heads in hot springs, or who cleaned their nostrils with neti pots, filled with untreated tap water. According to research, these amoebas are attracted to the chemicals, that nerve cells use to communicate with one another. Once these amoebas swim up the nose, they travel through the olfactory nerve, the nerve connected with sense of smell, into the frontal lobe of the brain. A person infected with Megleria fowleri, cannot spread the infection to another person. In addition, one cannot get infected, from swallowing water contaminated with Megleria. Although Megleria fowleri amoebas are somewhat common, they only rarely cause brain disease. Megleria fowleri disease is recognized as primary amoebic meningoencephalitis, or PAM which is considered a rare infection. But some cases of this infection, may be unreported. Meninges are the membranes, that wrap around the brain. Encephalo is the prefix used for brain and the suffix itis means inflammation. So, primary amoebic meningoencephalitis, is basically amoeba-caused widespread inflammation of the brain. It occurs from 0 to 8 times a year, roughly always from July to September. 
The concern is, these infections are difficult to catch early. During the stage 1, that is, for first 1 to 9 days of the infection, one may be asymptomatic. Possible symptoms include fever, nausea, vomiting, and a bad headache in the front of head. Once the infection progresses into the second stage, symptoms become more evident. One can develop a stiff neck, seizures, altered mental status, hallucinations, or a coma. Even when the symptoms are more severe, it can be easily mistaken for a more common problem, like bacterial meningitis. These infections are generally fatal, with less than a 3% survival rate. It's uncertain why some people are able to survive the condition, but elements that may contribute to survival include early detection of the infection and treatment with an experimental drug called miltefacin, along with other aggressive treatments to reduce brain swelling. Studies reveal that numerous people may have antibodies to Nigleria fowleri. That indicates that they became infected with the amoeba, but that their immune systems battled it off. Who could have thought that pumping pollutants into the atmosphere would have so many distinct consequences? Conceivably, we can add brain-eating amoeba as an additional justification to take more action to prevent climate change. Nigleria fowleri infection can be prevented by avoiding swimming in bodies of freshwater. If you are swimming in freshwater, you can reduce your risk by not putting your head underwater or using nose clips to prevent water from going up your nose.